Hi everyone. Today I'd like to talk about uh, persistent memory plus RDMA, new age remote device. My name is Yang Xiao. I'm a software engineer at Nanjing Fujitsu Nanda in China and uh, have been working on Linux and related OSs for six years. I became a maintainer of Linux test project at the end of 2018. Currently, I'm focusing on persistent memory and RDMA. This is the agenda of my presentation. It includes five parts. I will explain why persistent memory with RDMA and show new specification of RDMA for remote P memory. Then, I will share how to implement a new specification on soft ROC and libib works. And then, I will introduce remote persistent memory access library. Finally, I will do a conclusion and share our future work. Okay, let me start from why persistent memory with RDMA. What is persistent memory? Persistent memory is a high-performance and better addressable memory device. It resides on the memory bus. P-memory is the short form of persistent memory. It has many advantages. For example, data is not volatile after power interruption. It has nearly the same speed and latency of DRAM. It is cheaper than DRAM and provides large capacity like SSD. User process can access P-memory in four modes, FSDux, DVDux, SECT, and ROW. FSDux and DVDux are good for improving the performance because they are decided to access P-memory directly. Certainly, it's fast to access local P-member in either FSDux or DVDux mode. However, modern IT system and service need to transport data from or to remote P-member, such as distributed database, distributed file system, key value store, and so on. Traditional TCP IP became the performance bottleneck due to a lot of redundant overhead. Look at this figure. For example, copy data between user space and kernel space. Package data by the software TCP IP stack of operating system. In this case, we need a faster access way to remote P memory. RDMA is a good solution to access remote P memory. RDMA is the short form of remote direct memory access. It is a technology that enables computers in a network to exchange data in the main memory without involving operating system of other computer. It avoids redundant overhead because of its advantages. For example, provide zero copy between kernel space and user space. Bypass the host system's software TCP IP stack and move data without CPU involvement by DMA engine. Is it good enough to access remote P memory by traditional RDMA? Not really. RDMA has two problems for accessing remote P memory. The first problem is no guarantee of data persistency. Look at this fi figure. Responder returns acknowledge as soon as the RDMA write reaches the remote RNIC. The return data will be lost when it has not been saved into remote P memory and the remote system is powered down. For data persistency, we need a way to confirm that the data is actually returned to remote P-memory. The second problem is no guarantee of data consistency. Two-phase commit is widely used by distributed database. For, look at this figure. For example, 
an application write a blob of data by two-phase commit. Step 1. Write a blob of data. Step 2. Mark the data as valued by updating an 8-byte value. Another application can know if the data is valued by reading the 8-byte value. RDMA doesn't provide an API for atomic write yet as step 2, so we need a way to update an 8-byte value atomically. There are two ways to solve these problems. The first way is to introduce new specification to extend RDMA. It adds RDMA flush to guarantee data persistency, and adds RDMA atomic write to guarantee data consistency. The second way is to make new up layer library. It not only guarantees the persistency and the consistency of data, but also hands the complexity of RDMA and provides a set of simple API to applications. In addition, it will support new specification in the future. Okay, I will talk about the above solutions and our effort next. Let me show new specification of RDMA for remote PMEMR. There are two associations to make new specification, IBTA and IETF. IBTA released a V1.5 specification in August 2021. It defined new RDMA operations for remote PMEMR. IETF relieved a draft in March 2020 but didn't update it anymore. It also defined new RDMA operations for remote PMEMR. Intel has shared the overview of IBTS new specification on Storage Developer Conference. Today, I'll talk about IBTS new specification. IBTS new specification defined new RDMA flush operation. Look at this figure. A new RDMA flush can flush all primary writes or specific memory regions. It guarantees that the data is pushed to global visibility or persistency. It will send the RDMA reader response with zero size to request after the data has been posted. On both request and the responder, the RDMA write and RDMA flush should be handled in order. IBTS new specification also defined new RDMA atomic write operation. Look at this figure. A new RDMA atomic write can write an allied 8-byte value atomically. It will send the RDMA read response with zero size to request after the 8-byte value has been returned. On both request and responder, the RDMA flush and RDMA atomic write should also be handled in order. To support RDMA flush and RDMA atomic write, what must be extended in the stack of RDMA? As shown in the figure below, the whole stack of RDMA needs to be extended to export new operations. LibIBWorks library provides RDMA API to applications and it has not supported new operations yet. Currently, there is no hardware ANIC and related driver to support new operations. The next thing I'm going to talk about is how to implement new specification on soft ROC and libibworks. Why use soft ROC? As I said, new specification requires hardware support usually. V1.5 specification has been released, but hardware versions need time to make new ANIC. It may be a long time and we don't want to wait the new ANIC. For this reason, we are focusing on soft ROC driver. 
it is decided to make normal NIC support RDMA. Though it is slower than real RNIC, user can experience RDMA easily. Finally, we decided to extend the soft RC and leave IB works. This figure shows the software stack of RDMA based on soft RC. What is soft RC? We need to know RC v2 before introducing soft RC. RC v2 is the short form of IP routable RDMA over converged Ethernet. RC v2 is a network protocol. It can transfer IP transport header and payload through the traditional Ethernet, IP, and UDP headers. If packets are formatted by RC v2, they can be forwarded by TCP IP routers and switchers. Soft RC is software based RC v2. It produces IP transport header and insets it and payload into the UDP header by software. The red figure shows the difference between hardware RC v2 and soft RC. Let me talk about how to implement a new RDMA flash process on soft RC. First of all, both local soft RC and remote soft RC handle RDMA write and RDMA flash requests in order. We are investigating how to ensure the order. Secondly, please see the detailed RDMA flash process. Step 1. Local soft RC prepares an RDMA flash request packet by the following changes. And the new IB OP code RC RDMA flash OP code in base transport header. And the new flash extended transport header, including selectivity lever and the placement tab. Specify the address and less to flash in RDMA extended transport header. Look at this figure. These three headers are modified by step one. The details of selectivity lever and placement tab are displayed on the right. Step 2. Local soft RC sends the RDMA flash request packet over UDP. Step 3. Remote soft RC accepts the RDMA flash request packet and the flash is the specified range into DRAM or PMEMR by several CPU instructions. Step 4. Remote Soft RC prepares a RDMA flash responder packet by the following changes. Use IB OP code RC RDMA read response only OP code in base transport header. Set ARC or NAC in ARC extended transport header. Look at this figure. These two headers are modified by step 4. Step 5. Remote Soft RC sends the RDMA flash response package over UDP. Step 6. Local Soft RC accepts the RDMA flash response package and uh, generates the corresponding completion. Let me continue to talk about how to implement a new RDMA atomic write process on soft RC. Firstly, both local soft RC and remote soft RC handle RDMA flash and RDMA atomic write requests in order. We are also invest investigating how to ensure the order. Secondly, please see the detailed RDMA atomic write process. Step 1. Local Soft RC prepares a RDMA atomic write request packet by the following changes. And the new IB OP code RC RDMA atomic write OP code in base transport header. 
specifies the address and length to atomic right in RDMA extended transport header. Populate an aligned 8 bit payload. Look at this figure. These two hands and this payload are modified by step 1. Step 2. Local soft RCE sends the RDMA atomic write request packet over UDP. Step 3. Remote soft RCE accepts RDMA atomic write request packet and writes the 8 bat payload atomically. Step 4. Remote soft ROC prepares a RDMA atomic write response packet by the following changes. Use IB OP code RC RDMA read response only OP code in pay base transport header. Set ARC or NAC in ARC extended transport header. Look at this figure. These two hands are modified by step 4. Step 5. Remote soft RC sends the RDMA atomic write response packet over UDP. Step 6. Local soft RC accepts the RDMA atomic write response packet and generates the corresponding completion. Okay, let's go on to the next. How to implement a new RDMA flash API on Lib IB works. To support RDMA flash in IBV post send, we defined a new IBV WR RDMA flash OP code to identify a flash operation and a new structure flash to transfer the information required by the flash operation. To support RDMA flash in IBV port CQ, we defined a new IBV WC RDMA flash OP code to identify a complete flash operation. The following code shows how applications use RDMA flash API. For example, post RDMA flash request by IBV post send. Get the completion of RDMA flash by IBV port CQ. How to implement a new RDMA Atomic Write API on libibworks To support RDMA Atomic Write in IBV post send, we defined a new IBV WR RDMA Atomic Write OP code to identify an Atomic Write operation and take use of structure RDMA to transfer the information required by the Atomic Write operation. To support RDMA atomic write in IBV port CQ, we defined the new IBV WC RDMA atomic write OP code to identify a complete atomic write operation. The following code also shows how applications use RDMA atomic write API. For example, post RDMA atomic write request by IBV post send. Get the completion of RDMA atomic write by IBV port CQ. New RDMA operations are under development. Is there any available solution? Remote persistent memory access library is an available solution. What is a remote persistent memory access library? It is a new library to access remote PMEMR over RDMA. LibRPMA is the short form of Remote Persistent Memory Access Library. LibRPMA provides a complete set of API for applications to access remote PMEMR, like RPMA Send, RPMA Receive, and RPMA Write, and so on. It has RPMA flush to flush the previous write into remote PMEMR. It also has RPMA atomic write to mark the previous write valued atomically after the previous RPMA flush has been completed. It will support new RDMA operations when they are available. 
Inter and the FGITS are main contributors to LibRPMA. Let's look at the basic API of LibRPMA. I will explain the functions of some LibRPMA API. For memory management, we can register memory region by RPMA MR rig and deregister memory region by RPMA MR rig. For connection management, we can create a new outgoing connection request by RPMA con rig new and uh, obtain an incoming connection request by RPMA EP next call rig. For messaging, we can send data to remote side by RPMA send and uh, receive data from remote side by RPMA receive. For remote uh, P memory exercise, we can write data to remote P memory by RPMA write flash data into remote P memory by RPMA flash and uh, write 8 byte value to remote P memory atomically by RPMA write atomic. In libRPMA community, there are 11 examples to show how to use various libRPMA API together. Let's look at the example 05 flash to persistent for details. <clears throat> look at this example. Client uses DRAM to register memory region by RPMA MR rig. Server uses pmemory to register memory region by RPMA MR rig. They are established connection and uh, exchange private data by several RPMA core functions. With the connection, client can transfer data to remote pmemory by RPMA write and RPMA flash. Currently, Flash and Atomic Write is not supported by RDMA. So, how does LibRPMA implement them? How to implement RPMA Flash operation? LibRPMA implemented RPMA Flash by traditional RDMA read. Look at this figure. Request sends a RDMA read as a RPMA flash. The RDMA read waits the completion of previous write automatically. The RDMA read flashes all return data from RNIC to the remote P memory before reading the data from the remote P memory. This way is called as applies persistency method. How to implement RPMA atomic write operation? LibRPMA implemented RPMA atomic write by traditional RDMA write with aligned 8 byte value. Look at this figure. Request sends a RDMA write with aligned 8 byte value and a fence flag as a RPMA atomic write. The RDMA write with the completion of previous flash, bends the fence flag, and then writes the value. The RDMA write needs to be flashed to remote pmember as well. Unfortunately, the RDMA write has to wait all previous read due to the fence flag. One more necessary consideration for RPMA flash operation. Intra-DDL is a key feature introduced on the Intra-Zone E5 Professor and Intra-Zone E7 Professor V2. As the Intra's document mentions, DDL makes the Professor cache the primary destination and the source of IO data rather than main memory, helping to deliver increased bandwidth, lower latency, and reduce power consumption. With DDIO, traditional RPMA flush using RDMA read can only flush data to the last level cache of CPU. So, remote applications need to dream the data to pmemory by themselves. 
RPMA flush has to consider DDIO. How to implement RPMA flush operation with DDIO? In this case, lab RPMA implemented RPMA flush by traditional RDMA send and RDMA receive. Look at this figure. Request passes the address and reach to flush to respond by a RDMA send. The RDMA send with the completion of a previous write automatically and send flush the return data from RNIC to LLC. LLC is the last level cache of CPU. Respond flush or return data from LLC to PMEMR according to the context received. Responder notified the requested that the data had been returned into PMEMR by another RDMA send. This way is called as the general purpose server persistency method. Lib RPMA is an up layer library, so we would like to know how the performance of Lib RPMA is. How to evaluate the performance of Lib RPMA? Lib RPMA introduced the Lib RPMA dedicated engine to FIO so that we can use FIO to do the performance test on our environment. FIO is a benchmark to test the IO performance. The table on the left shows common configuration of our environment. The example on the right shows the detailed steps to run the FIO benchmark on our environment. For example, client need, needs to build the latest FL including libRPMA engine and uh, reference is simple job, job files to create a new job file for the libRPMA client and then run a file with the client's job file. Server, the server needs to do the similar steps. By FIO benchmark, we got the bandwidth and the latency of remote PMEMR access based on libRPMA and the source of local PMEMR access, as shown in the tables below. Compared with local PMEMR access, the performance of remote PMEMR access is slightly worse, but I think libRPMA is still, is still a good solution to access remote PMEMR and it may provide higher performance in the future. At the end, I want to do a conclusion and share our future work. In this presentation, I explained why PMEMR with RDMA and showed the new specification of RDMA for remote PMEMR. Then I showed how to implement new RDMA operations on SoftRC and LibIBWorks. And then I introduced LibRPMA. In the future, we will finish implementing new RDMA operations on SoftRC and LibIBWorks and then push them into the kernel and RDMA core. We will make libRPMA support new RDMA operations. Finally, thank you for listening to my presentation. Please contact me by email if you have any question about this slide. Thanks a lot.